Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery. Today we have an interesting reproduction of a European steel crossbow. So this crossbow I purchased in the UK and the original owner, his grandfather, was a collector of crossbows. And this was one of those crossbows that he had for sale. So very happy today to present you guys this crossbow. So this crossbow is a 170 pound European steel crossbow based on roughly the 16th century Renaissance period or slash late medieval period. But there are some features that don't make it historical as a reproduction and I will get into the detail. So firstly, let's talk about the history of 16th century crossbows in Europe and then we'll get into the specifics of why some of these components are ahistorical. That being said, it's still a good shooter that I use today for shooting. Um, and of course, historical crossbows from the 16th century, you don't want to shoot that. But reproductions, that's the nice thing about them. You can actually shoot them today. Um, there are some ace historical features, but at least you can take this to a medieval fair and you can shoot it and enjoy, enjoy it as a crossbow. So that's what I like about reproductions. So when it comes to the history of 16th century European steel crossbows, this was a time period when you know, gunpowder is starting to phase out all other kinds of missile weapons. And, you know, you're going to have more pike and shot warfare as you proceed in, in the time period in Europe. So, but that being said, the crossbow is still used in military warfare during the 16th century in Europe. So one of the uses of these crossbows is they were mixed with gunpowder weapons and bows, um, depending on the army. For example, Burgundians, they would have mixed crossbows with um, archers, um, likely English mercenaries. And then you also had can cannons from the Burgundian army during the 15th century. Later on, when you get into the 16th century, these things were taken, um, for example, by the Norwegian militias. Um, in Norway at that time, pike and shot is still not the preferred tactic in the 16th century. Um, of course, melee weapons are still very important. Cavalry is placed less of an importance in the geography of that region, so you get more hit and run skirmishing warfare. A steel crossbow like this with a gold's foot lever would be perfect for hit and run tactics. Um, a bow as well, but these things, because they're made of steel, they're a lot more durable, so you can bump, the, bump it around and you can run, run around take a shot, run away, take a shot, run away. A lot of the 16th century um, archaeological finds in the Norwegian museums look very similar to these crossbows. The nut is, is not historical, and I'll, I'll get into the nut soon. But yeah, in the 16th century, this is the kind of time period where, yes, crossbows are being phased out by gunpowder, but there's still uses of these things in the 16th century. On the topic of Norwegian crossbows, this one's also from the 16th century. This is a reproduction that I made of the Skane crossbow. Well, the one on the bottom is more used for militia use from the military, and it's very unlikely made by the militia. But these are more like a peasant hunting crossbow and also used as toys for teenagers. Um, but um, these crossbows with the pushpin design can be used for hunting, but it's a lot more limited. Something like this can be made in a typical household um, and um, you can go use to hunt squirrels or small game. Um, but I wouldn't take this to the military. I'd take this one to the military, but with a heavier draw weight than this. Now, these are also used by Spanish conquistadors for the New World. Um, we have archaeological evidence, for example, in the Padre Island in modern-day Texas, and there were steel crossbow archaeological finds. In the New World, um, crossbow ammunition like these can be made by a conquistador in the field. But gunpowder is not that easy to make in the field um, in, in the New World. Now, besides military use, these were also used in the 16th century as hunting tools for nobles. Now, Maximilian I from the Holy Roman Empire, he also purchased crossbows of similar Western European style with a rectangular tiller but almost all these historical crossbows use um, bone or antler as, as the nut instead of steel, and I'll get into it. 
So now we briefly talked about the history of 16th century crossbows. Um, let's get into this specific one um, and why some of the features are ahistorical. First one is the most obvious one is the nut. Steel nuts, there's no historical evidence of steel nuts being used during this time period. Steel nuts is more used in modern crossbows because steel is easily accessible today um, in the industrialized world. In fact, it's harder for us to get horn and antler um, today in Europe than it is to get steel. So it makes logical sense to use steel today. The advantage of a horn nut is it's lighter, so the release speed is faster and that will allow you to shoot an arrow faster with a quicker release. And there's concerns with a lighter draw weight that the metallic nuts are too heavy, so the moment inertia is too high, and that can, and that can cause um, a dry fire if the nut is spinning too slow. If it spins too slow, there's a small chance that the nut, the string jumps up and hits the upper portion of the, of the knock, which can cause a dry fire or a partial fire. And that's ob obviously not good. So instead of that, the lighter horn and antler nuts are much lighter, so they spin faster. Now, I have seen metallic nuts in military crossbows, but almost all of them are the really large ones, and they're made of brass. But most nuts are still made of horn and antler because it's faster and there's less chance of dry fire. Now, in a 13th century source, there is mentions of using metallic reinforcement on these um, antler nuts because the bearing surface wears out over time um, uh, so especially on a organic nut so you want to put a metallic surface at the bearing surface to increase um, the wear and tear uh, durability it can also be used to reinforce the claws on the top to prevent it from breaking so metal reinforcements were actually used when we have direct evidence in the 13th century in Venice um, now that we got that out of the way, you want to make sure the nut flush is perfectly flush in the stock. This one, you can see there's a, not a millimeter, half a millimeter, a very, very small gap, but it's a very, very small gap. Ideally, you want a perfectly flush onto the back so that when the, when the string is uh, on the claw, on the nut, this will, the, the force will actually rest on the wooden tiller and that is ideal for heavy draw weights. For 170 pounds, it doesn't matter. This very small gap is fine because this thing is very light at, for, for a steel crossbow. These pins will hold that 170 pounds just fine. Now let's get into the lock plates on these historical crossbows. Almost all these lock plates I've seen on historical ones are inlaid into the wood because that gives you the extra strength. When it's just on the outside, uh, you're really relying on the bolts to hold onto. The, 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 the lock plate, but ideally you want the lock plate inlaid into the wood and that will give you extra strength and that's very important on the 1000 pound plus crossbows, but this one's 170 pounds so it doesn't matter. The other thing about the lock plate is here is a goat's foot lever pin which is part of the trigger bar. This is designed so you have a goat's foot lever to pull to span the crossbow with the goat's foot lever. So this one can be used with a goat's foot lever. Um, I don't have a ghost foot lever with me to show you, but this one, because it's only 170 pounds, you can span it with your legs, no problem. The next thing we'll talk about is the steel prod. We have to talk about the steel prod if we're talking about a steel crossbow. So, so this steel crossbow prod is made of 20th century steel. I'm not sure if it's forged by a blacksmith. I believe so. On the tips, it's just cut in with a piece of leather so that the, the linen string can latch on. Now the historical crossbows, the tips, are almost always curved so it like custom fits right into the linen string. But this one is just a bar with a notch on. So this feature is less historical, especially with the leather putting in there. That is to prevent the linen string from rubbing onto the metal bar. But from the historical ones I see they're more curved. The next thing about the prod is, of course, it's a lot thinner than the historical military ones. You know, with the 1,000 pounds, the thickness would be a lot thicker than this. But you don't need it for this specific crossbow. Um, it's intended to be spanned by hand. The next thing I want to talk about is probably the second most 
a historical feature of this crossbow where the stirrup is part of the bow irons. I've never seen that on a historical crossbow. Um, this is part of, they're all one piece. All the historical ones, the stirrup goes into the, the, the prod and then it's usually a one piece. Sometimes it's forge weld at the tips. Sometimes it's just a one piece and it goes right into the bow iron. Um, but this one is part of the bow iron and I've never seen that. That's why it's a modern reproduction. The other thing I want to show you is this piece here, and that's to prevent it from splitting. The wood can split when it's notched on to the bowl here. So this pin right here prevents that wood stock from splitting, which is a good feature. Um, besides that, well, generally speaking, the look of the, um, the bow irons, I think, is inspired by Flemish crossbow um, bow irons in the late uh, 17th century. They look closest to those ones. Um, besides that, the next thing I want to talk about is the tiller or stock. The tiller is made of ash and it's a Western European design from its rectangular side profile. But the, the Central European feature is here right near the brace height. That's more of a Central European feature. So it's a mix of Western and Central European features on this stock. This is a pretty good crossbow for taking to medieval fairs to show people how a crossbow works and for people to shoot it. As a modern reproduction, it shoots, it does the job, and these are very heavy boats. Let me show you some footage of me of shooting the crossbow with these very heavy boats. <sighs> Nice. There you go. There you go.